Well, how are you doing? Okay, this is going to be a very quick video. Uh, it's called Lift Force Debunks the Globe Model. Um, uh, this would be a very simple argument that any flat earther can use against anyone in our opposition, on our, on our opposition side, regardless of who they are. Okay, <clears throat> World Free 6020, as you all know, is the most well known pilot on our opposition side. Uh, debunks the globe model through his profession due to the effect of lift. <clears throat> I'll explain. Lift is created by thrust initially and can be added to or just controlled with the elevators at the rear of the plane. Lift begins and has its center of pressure about one quarter way back from the leading edge of the wings. Thrust causes downward force on the airplane's tail, which tilts the nose pitch up. Turning the elevator upwards will also cause this effect, as does the fact that the center of pressure is just under the leading edge of the wings. So, what is the common denominator here? The common denominator here is that all three things, thrust, elevator and center of pressure, can and will cause pitch up of the nose of the airplane to above zero degrees horizontal, which in turn causes the effect known as lift. But to fly around a globe earth, you must pitch down the nose of the, of the aircraft to below zero degrees horizontal on a consistent, base, consistent basis, but this in turn negates all lift force. As lift is only possible when the wings of the aircraft are above zero degrees horizontal and not at any other time. Okay, so let's have a quick look at angle of attack. Right? <clears throat> I try to keep this very simple as much as possible. Okay, angle of attack. We come down here. When it's ten, at 10 degrees above horizontal, there's a horizontal line here. When the chord line, the chord line is the line going through the center of the wing, is above 10 degrees above horizontal, you have a lot of uh, uh, positive pressure underneath here and negative pressure at the top of the wing. Okay, so when it's at four degrees, which is the, the normal cruising, most uh, aircraft to be being more than four degrees cruising altitude, uh, the, you have the pressure here and um, just about a quarter way back um, from the front, back about a quarter way, uh, or positive pressure on the underneath of the wing and negative pressure above. So the fast flowing air above. Um, faster flowing air above creates a lower pressure and the slower moving air below creates a higher pressure so high goes to low um, and increase in entropy so <clears throat> what happens is when the cord line is below horizontal so here it's minus eight degrees below horizontal as you can see that's all negative right it's all negatives here so it's negatives there's only some po positive on the top um, corner here of the wing but there's all negatives underneath, so there is no lift. So when the cord line is below horizontal, it negates and takes away the lift. So there is no lift when that is happening. So as you can see here, this is zero lift line. This is when the uh, cord line goes too high, it causes causes the a stall. So there's no lift when it goes too high uh, um, above horizontal. But also, excuse me, this is the this is the when the core line goes below um, uh, horizontal here as it shows the core line is below it and that's a zero lift line again. So when it goes too far up or too far down, uh, too far above horizontal it causes no lift but also when it goes below horizontal it causes no lift. Right? So you can't have lift if you're dipping the nose of the plane. Right? It doesn't work. That's, that's the whole point of the argument. So to go around the globe you have to dip your nose below horizontal, there is no way around it. But to fly an airplane, you have to fly with the nose, or with the wing, let's say, not even negate the nose, just the cord line of the wing has to be above horizontal. But if you're flying around the globe, the cord line will have to be below horizontal. So it's impossible to be flying around the globe if the cord line is going to be below horizontal. It's just impossible. Okay, so here we go to, uh, to angle of attack, attack systems and displays. Okay. <clears throat> When the when the aircraft this is probably this is more so aimed towards jet fighters, but it's the same thing. Um, uh, so when they're flying slow, there's a very very high angle of attack. Okay, um, slightly slow, there's a high angle of attack, not very high but high. On speed, which would be kind of cruising, there's an optimum angle of attack, which is a couple of degrees above horizontal. And slightly fast, it's about a degree above horizontal. And fast, then you will have it a bit horizontal and below. The reason you have to fly with about horizontal and below horizontal if you can to go fast is because um, thrust causes, as I said earlier, 
thrust causes a downward force on the tail. So that will tilt up the nose. So the more thrust, the more downward force on the tail. So I'd have to negate this downward force by uh, bringing the nose down. They'd probably have to use the elevator for that. And uh, that's how they'll bring it down. But they have to, well, the more thrust they add, the more uh, pitching of the nose will happen. So, they, so when they fly fast in a jet fighter, uh, let's just say they have to they have to uh, bring the nose down uh, otherwise uh, they'll hit a star um, that's that's the basics of it but th they can't fly like if they want to fly like uh, if they want to if they want to keep lift they can't go too far below either because they lose all the lift so it depends on what they want correct so here we are again in our angle of attack display um, this is some of the displays here uh, that they show. Um, <clears throat> you have this is the HUD display. They're showing how slow is a high angle of attack on speed. It'd be kind of cruising, be an opt optimum angle of attack. Majority of all distances are done at cruising altitude. All commercial airliners fly at cruising, uh, fly at a cruising altitude at, at what's known as on speed. So they're going to be flying for hundreds, thousands of miles with their nose above horizontal. And, and when they fly fast, uh, airplanes fly fast, they have to bring the nose down. Um, now, jet fighters might be a bit different from, might be a bit different from, uh, from uh, big airliners because they're a bit more maneuverable. Um, so, uh, like a big boat and a small boat, a speedboat can do a lot more maneuvers in a small amount of time and small space than a big boat can. Um, so, maybe this, the, the jets can nose down a bit more with safety and whatever. Um, but uh, in general, at cruising altitude, the optimum angle of attack is always above horizontal. Okay, uh, next one. <clears throat> so you have slow, it's 9.3. Um, uh, I think that's 9.3 degrees above. Uh, slightly slow, 8.8 .8 to 9.3. On speed, would be kind of cruising, they have 7.4 to 8.8. .8. This is the Super Hornet, I think this is a jet of some kind. Um, I could be wrong for that, but it sounds like a jet, um, a fighter jet. Slightly faster would be 6.9 to 7.4. Um, 6, um, 9 to 7.4. And fast then would be 0 to 6.9. So um, <clears throat> for a jet, the, so the more speed they have to, the faster they want to go, the more they have to bring the nose down. Because uh, trust will cause the, uh, the downward pressure on the tail, which will cause the nose to, uh, to pitch up. So when they want to go fast, they have to bring the nose down. But on a norm, at normal speed, which will be, let's say, cruising altitude speed, let's say for a commercial airliner, it would be 450 to 600 miles an hour. Let's say an average of 5 to 550, uh, 550 miles an hour. Would be, uh, oh, uh, so uh, that would be on speed, it would be um, about 2 to 4 degrees, normally around 4, I think it is, above horizontal all the time. So, <clears throat> now, this is the red line. This is the cord line here. There is uh, right <clears throat> red line. There is negated to no lift below the red line. So when the wing, when the cord line goes, starts going below this red line. This is the cord line of the wing, and it goes below red, the red line. It uh, there is no lift, right? All lift is being negated to no lift. The pressure starts to come on the top of the wing here, as opposed to the bottom here. It's normally here, but when you start bringing it below the red, the cord below the horizontal line, it starts up there. So. It's impossible to fly a plane, a uh, commercial airliner, which flies the forest. I mean, uh, they fly further than anything um, that I'm aware of. Um, it's impossible to fly them all around the world um, from place to place and uh, at thousands of miles um, for hours at a time with their noses above horizontal. You know, they can't even fly for a mile. They can't even fly for a mile with the nose, no, with the with the uh, sorry, with the core line below horizontal, because they'll be they'll have no lift, they'll end up going into the ground. They have to have the core line above horizontal. They have to. So even like they have to even the B fifty two bomber, which is designed to have its nose below horizontal, their core line has still has to be it's because it's way it's it's designed with the wings. The core line of the wings still has to be above horizontal for it to fly horizontal. That's the way it works. That's what lift is. So lift completely debunks all claims that uh, people are flying around the globe. Um, just to finish, 
and not to rub salt in the wounds, just so people know. Um, here is Wolfie 6020, and this is, this is what he said back five years ago, and he still makes this claim. Like a lot of pilots still, they don't really seem to understand that what they do makes it impossible to fly around the globe. But uh, this is just a short clip of one of his videos travel around the earth so if we imagine this aircraft is going to travel all around the earth it would obviously have to pitch down and pitch all the way around 360 degrees that's logical right but how long does it take to do that it takes 48 hours so there is wolfie who's a pilot stating that um i don't know what to say it's like uh, they follow an attitude that's all they do. You'd have to do the same thing on a flat earth. It won't make any difference. Um, you'd have to follow an attitude. But to fly around the globe, you'd have no choice but to uh, have your cord line below horizontal. And uh, you know, you'd have to have all the corrections there, all the data for all, all the, uh, besides all that, you'd have to have the data and evidence for all the corrections you'd have to make for the drop and the curvature. But, you can't do any of that because you can't bring the cord line below horizontal without losing lift. So you'd be falling out of the sky. You wouldn't make it up into the sky without lift. Um, and you'd fall straight out of it if your cord line is below it. Or you'd be heading down to the ground pretty fast. Okay, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching.